Installing tight, accurate hinges indoors is not a matter of luck or even years of practice. It's about using two or three basic woodworking techniques plus some tips and tricks along the way. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today while you watch me install this here on Proper DIY. The hinges I'm fitting today are to a new door and frame, so to ensure they match exactly I've laid them out and shimmed the door in position, so I can accurately mark the bottom of each hinge on both. For this I'm using a Stanley knife with a new blade, as for this whole process a pencil is just not accurate enough. Now the tradition is hinges go four and a half inches from the top and nine inches from the bottom. That's so they match up with the top and bottom rail. My top and bottom rails are slightly different dimensions to that, so I've adjusted mine so they still match the top and bottom rail. And I put one dead in the middle as well. It doesn't really matter where they go as long as they're near enough the top and bottom. If in doubt, have a look around your house and your workplace and you'll get some sort of clue of where the hinges should go. So this is the type of hinge I'm fixing today. It's a four inch butt hinge, which is a fairly standard hinge. It's got some rollers in there that will help the operation once it's under the load of this door. You'll notice on these hinges, there's five sections. Now three of them, the top, middle and bottom will go to one side and the other two will go to the other. Now the tradition is the side with the three goes to the door frame and the side with the two goes to the door. So this is where I'm gonna be fixing my hinge today. The two on this side, the three will go to the door frame. In reality, this is perfectly symmetrical anyway. So if I actually scribed out and fitted it one way around or the other, it wouldn't actually make any difference. I could always turn it around, but that is the tradition. Before we mark and start cutting the door to fit the hinge, I have to say there's two ways of doing this. The professional carpenter way is to measure the size of the hinge and then with a the marking gauge, mark the door and then go from there. Now the way I was taught and the way that's always worked for me is to use the hinge to actually mark the door. And that's what we're gonna be doing now. So the hinge is going to go roughly in this position. Before we take out any material, we want to mark around the perimeter so we know what to take out. Now, I've already made a mark with a Stanley knife at the bottom of the hinge that you saw me make earlier, and that lines up with the same mark on the frame. So we know we're going to get it in the same place. Now, I've also made a, a pencil mark here, so I know the hinge is here as opposed to here, because if I put it there, then that would be not very good and quite embarrassing as well. Now, the way that I've been taught to mark the perimeter of a hinge is to turn the hinge over and use the hinge part up against the door. I line it up here, and you need to be using a new sharp standing knife for this, because this is the secret to getting this hinge in nice and tight. Standing knife goes into the cut I made earlier. The hinge is just brought up to it. Now I know that that hinge is well registered against the door in that direction. It's absolutely in line with the standing knife cut in that direction. So all I have to do is keep pressure on here and make sure that this doesn't move. So with the Stanley knife now, I'm gonna make some very, very light cuts around the perimeter. It's better to make a number of light cuts rather than a few deeper cuts because if you go too hard what you may find is you start following the grain especially along this line here. So coming down here if the grain is coming away from the hinge if I'm not careful I'll come away from the hinge and just follow the grain. So I want to keep it pointed slightly towards the hinge and putting pressure on this edge. So just very, very slightly score. And I might do that half a dozen times, I don't know, until I've got something a little bit deeper. And then lastly, this edge here. And once that's done, we've now got a perimeter marked out with this Stanley knife. 
that isn't very deep but is very accurate as well. You can just reinforce those lines now without the hinge in place because you've got a guide for the standing knife to run in. We don't want to go very deep, it's just not maybe a millimetre or so. Go to the edge and get the corners in place. Just roll down into the edge there. With regard to how to mark out setting the depth of the hinge, a little trick I've used before now on softwood doors like this, it might not work on hardwood, but definitely softwood, is if you get yourself something flat that's nicely referenced on the, the top face, and then using the corner of the hinge underneath against it, if I just push that in and push it into the timber, I've now got a mark there that's actually exactly the depth of this flat face of the hinge. If I do that at both ends, I'll just do it at this end here, I've now marked the timber in both ends. What I can do, if I get my standing knife and I'll use this ruler here, I've got a straight edge, I can actually put my standing knife in the bottom of that hinge mark there. I can line it up with the hinge mark there and then I can actually very carefully once again put a mark all the way down. And this gives us the first rough guess on the depth. It can always be adjusted and we'll obviously be using trial and error to get to that. But at least that will set a depth for us for taking out this material. So now we've got a perimeter marked out with a standing knife. It's very tempting to get a chisel into that line and start opening up to start taking our waste out. And that's actually the last thing we should be doing. And I'll tell you why. If you get a chisel into that line, even if the bevel is on the waste side of the material, if I hit that with a hammer now, it's going to bruise both sides of this line and actually make our hole bigger than it should be. So we're going to leave that until the very last minute. So what we want to do now is start taking out the material from the inside, but come in one or two millimetres from each of these lines that we've just marked and leave this final trim until the end. So what I'm going to do is put a very rough perimeter in place inside of the line that we want to end up at. With the bevel on the bottom at a sort of 45 degree angle, I'm going to make a number of cuts into the timber. I'm going to stop inside my line there. So I'm still well away from the first initial mark. Now some of these you may find come out on their own accord because what we've done is essentially because they're so close to each other they start meeting up and falling apart. The one line we can start working to is this one that we've marked on the side and the reason being is that this hinge is actually going to cover this line so we don't have to be as accurate on this side one as we do along the top. So we can mark some of the perimeter here so we know at least what depth we're going down to. So so far we've taken about one millimetre out of the three off. So now it's just a matter of repeating this process until we get down to something close to the thickness of the hinge before we start trying the hinge. Okay, let's offer up the hinge and get a feel for depth. Obviously I can't get it in at the moment because I I've still left this material. What I can do is get it sort of half in and if I feel across there I am pretty close. The hinge is still slightly proud here on about level. 
So just a little bit to take off here, a little bit to mill out. And then we can start maybe looking at finishing the perimeter. I'm just around the right depth, so now it's time to go back and trim that perimeter to the final line. You can see that this one millimetre slither of timber that I've left here is so soft now because it's got no restraint on this side that actually it's not going to take much to get rid of that. So when I actually put my chisel down here now, rather than bruising this side of the wood, this is just going to come away. What we can do to help that is just to undercut it slightly to the same depth as the rest of the hinge. Oh, so it's because I've done that, it's almost you almost don't need to even put your chisel down there, it just falls away which means that we've got the original edge of the Stanley knife totally untouched. Just deepen that cut slightly. It doesn't take much because there's no strength in the timber left. It's very satisfying being able to take out material up to a very accurate edge without even ever touching that edge. Chisels never come down the line, however, I managed to get the material away. Rather than using the chisel, I can go back to the Stanley knife and just cut it. That's the great thing about softwood, is it's actually really nice to work with. So really happy with that. If you come in close, just see the fit on the perimeter. So the last thing that we need to do is to screw the hinge into the door. And as usual, there's two ways of doing it. And I'll show you both ways to get the screws into the center of the holes, you can use a braddle. Most people haven't got a braddle, so let's just use a nail. And just mark out the center of each hole, ready to drill. So to drill this out, I would always use a drill bit that's around about the same size as the center shaft of the screw. That allows the screw to go in fairly easily, but also for the uh, thread on the screw to really grip nicely. So I found one that's around about the same size as a center shaft. So if we just put that in our drill. We know the drill, the screws. So I'm gonna be drilling the majority of this drill bit nice and vertical, both directions. The other way of drilling a hole is by using one of these self centering pilot bits and these centre themselves on the hole in the hinge and then drill a pilot hole. I found self-centering bits an excellent investment for just a few pounds and I've used them far more than I thought I would. I put a link to them in the description below. And that is the hinge complete. I'm happy with that. The process for installing the hinge on the door frame is exactly the same 
So that's something I need to get on with now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones, which are DIY jobs all around the house and garden, including how I made this door and also the hole that it's going to go into as well. And if you're feeling really brave, please hit subscribe. So from one hinge fitted, another two to go. I'll see you next time.